July 25th, 1961, America is waiting for the arrival in Washington of the Prime Minister of the Federation of Nigeria, Alhaji Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa. Prime Minister Balewa is making an official visit to America at the invitation of the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. Waiting at the airport to greet him are Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, Secretary of State Dean Rusk, Mr. Joseph Palmer, the American Ambassador to Nigeria, and other high-ranking American officials. Accompanying the Prime Minister is Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wachuku, Ambassador Udochi, and Minister Shagare and Benson, and other key members of the Nigerian government. Prime Minister, I am honored to welcome you and the distinguished members of your party to the United States. This welcome is only the beginning. You will find as you travel through this country a very deep and genuine interest in the exciting developments which are taking place in your country and in Africa today. I am very pleased to be with you in, the, in Washington today. And I look forward to the week which we are to spend among you. I have no doubt that the American people will receive us with all the kindness that they all receive strangers. This is just a brief reply to your very warm address of welcome. Thank you. An official motorcade now conveys Prime Minister Balewa to the center of Washington. Many friendly Americans are waiting to welcome Sir Abubakar to his home in Washington. During his stay in the American capital, the distinguished visitor will reside at the Blair House, the special residence for guests of the American president. Just across the street from the Blair House is the White House, where President Kennedy awaits Prime Minister Balewa. The two leaders are meeting to discuss matters of mutual and international interest. In a joint communique summarizing the outcome of their deliberations, they reaffirm their support for the principle of self-determination for dependent peoples and their unalterable opposition to racial discrimination under any name or in any guise. President Kennedy expressed his pleasure at the success of the Monrovia Conference and congratulated the Prime Minister on his constructive contribution. The two leaders affirmed their confidence that their exchange of views had strengthened the bonds of friendship between their two countries.
The next stop for Sir Abu Bakar is a memorial to one of America's best loved presidents, Abraham Lincoln. The Lincoln Memorial is a goal for every visitor to the American capital. Tourists from all over the world are drawn by a reverence for the man known by all men as the great emancipator. As they stand before the statue of Lincoln, the Prime Minister and his party remember the words in which Lincoln addressed his countrymen. He called upon them to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Sir Abubakar and his party see a monument to America's first president, George Washington, as they leave the Lincoln Memorial. A group of children proudly display the placard which Prime Minister Balewa has autographed for them. The United States Department of State is the Prime Minister's next stop. An exhibit of photographs from Nigeria and of Nigerian arts and crafts has been planned to coincide with Sir Abubakar's visit. This exhibit is aimed at helping Americans to understand the progress being made in Nigeria. Prime Minister Balewa is once again warmly greeted by Secretary of State Dean Rusk. The meeting affords an occasion for the two men and their advisors to confer on a wide variety of subjects. The House of Representatives of the United States invites Prime Minister Balewa to speak in a special session convened in his honor. Regarded as a signal of honor and privilege to be invited to address this world famed gathering, not only because the United States of America is one of the leading nations of the world and one of the most powerful and advanced on earth today, but also because I believe that those who have struggled and worked to achieve independence will share with you and the great country which you represent, a special meaning of liberty, of freedom from outside control, and opportunities for the fulfillment of one's national desires and cultural heritage. No one who visits the United States of America will fail to notice the effects of a free society and of a democratic system of government in which the rulers are the embodiments of the will of the people and where the activity of those who rule are reviewed frankly from time to time by the entire population. We admire the American way of life and we respect the people of the United States for their love of freedom. The spirit of freedom which was kindled in the hearts of the founders of your great nation and has impelled you to great feats in moments of national emergency as well as in your daily activities. That same spirit has shown itself in Africa and we are determined that the flame of freedom once alight shall not go out again in our continent. The Islamic Center and Mosque is one of the American capital's more beautiful religious structures. Al-Haji Sir Abu Bakr arrives to visit the mosque, which is a center for study and research on Islam. Dr. Mahmoud Hobala, the director of the Islamic Center, greets Prime Minister Balewa.
Dr. Hobala personally conducts his distinguished visitor on a tour of the center and answers the Prime Minister's questions about its varied activities. When Sir Abubakar visited the United States in 1955, the Islamic Center had not yet been completed. The Prime Minister is impressed by its finished state and also by America's interest in Islam. The chiefs of mission of the African nations hold a special reception in honor of Prime Minister Balewa and his party. Present at this gala occasion are Ambassador and